member of uh, uh, Omega Sci-Fi we will have talked to today. Earlier we talked to Ben Holbert just a little bit ago. Daryl, we'll bring you into the conversation. Thank you for being with us. What can you tell us about uh, uh, Steve Stevens and the relationship you may have had with him through your fraternity, Omega Sci-Fi? Um, he just seemed like a very nice guy. I mean, I never had any um, indication that that he would be prone to violence or do anything to harm anyone. He was a nice man. Uh, this is just totally still a shock. Um, I, ever since I found out Sunday, I just can't believe that something like this would happen. Daryl, earlier when we spoke with Ben Holbert, uh, he was telling us that someone, uh, one of the fraternity brothers, who was very close to Steve Stevens, had had a conversation with him uh, prior mm -hmm. to, to the shooting on Easter Sunday. Can you give us any more insight into that conversation and, and uh, was there anything that stood out? No, I don't um, know of anything about a conversation he had with another one of the brothers, but because the last time we talked, Steve and I, it was about two weeks ago, so I don't know. Uh, that's why this is all a shock to me, because at the time, me and him were planning a uh, fishing trip. So everything uh, seemed as usual with normal. him two weeks ago? Yeah. Yeah, everything seemed normal. He, he reached out to me, and I explained to him at the time, because I'm in school, that I couldn't get away to start fishing now. But I had promised that we would go once I uh, finished my finals this semester. And he said, okay, that's fine. It was just a brief conversation. And he said, well, I'll be in touch. And I said, well, okay, well, you be careful. And it was just, you know, general conversation. And he seemed upbeat. And uh, that was it. Did he say anything, Daryl, about a, 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 a love that went bad, a love life or a girlfriend that, went, uh, that, that he, he fell out with? Or, or did he say anything about financial problems? He didn't mention anything. He wasn't upset. He wasn't, he seemed okay. I mean, it was nothing out of the ordinary. Our conversation was very... Very easy going. It was, he wasn't st sounding stressed. He didn't look stressed. It was just casual, just casual conversation. Like, you know, like we're talking right now. It's nothing bothering me. That's how he was talking to me. It was like no indication. It's just out of, this is all out of the blue. This is a total out of character for him. Had he ever said anything about the, uh, going, going to shooting ranges and firing weapons and anything like Not that? Not around me. Not around me, no. Did you, did you know that he did that? No, I did not. Mm -hmm. How is the fraternity going to uh, 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 process all of this now? I mean, that this was a fraternity brother, uh, apparently a man that you loved as a fraternity man. Uh, how do you process all of this and deal with this? Everything that has taken place since uh, Sunday afternoon at 2 o'clock when you heard about Steve Stevens. Well, everything is really up in the air now, but as far as an official uh, statement being released that would go through attorney Walter Madison uh, on behalf of the chapter um, but me personally I've, I've just been talking to family and close friends you know trying to process all of this I but you. I'm sorry. Uh, keep going Daryl I'm sorry we were just taking some technical things here continue your statement okay okay um, me personally I've been just dealing with my family and friends you know trying to talk things out and uh, just process everything. But as far as uh, the fraternity, I can't speak to that. Uh, Attorney uh, Walter Madison, who's a member of the fraternity, he will be issuing a statement, I'm pretty sure, in the next couple of hours or so, or the next day or so, um, regarding how the chapter will be handling situations from here on out. But just on a personal note, I'm just, it's just been, it's just been uh, sleepless nights for the past two days. Yeah. I can imagine. Because I live I live less than 200 yards from where he lived. We lived in buildings next to each other, and I saw him on a regular basis. So I, I'm just, you know, I was, I, while he was on the loose, I was concerned, you know, for uh, my family, and you know, because he knew where I lived. He'd been to my home, and I just wanted to make sure that, you know, when, while he was on the run, that he didn't try to double back and come to my doorstep. Were you, you were concerned about your own safety? Oh, uh, yeah. Yes, I was. Because, you know, when somebody has gone, has br had a breakdown like that, you don't know what they're capable of doing. Even though I was no threat to him, when a person's in, in duress or, you know, there's no telling what they'll resort to, to you know, self-preservation kicks in. So he, I, I didn't fear for my safety because we didn't have any kind of negative run-ins, but 
if he'd have came to my door trying to seek shelter, I, there was no way I was going to have him in my home, putting my, my myself and my family in danger. Mm -hmm. So here's but, someone uh, who you saw on a, a regular basis, Daryl. You lived nearby, and mm -hmm. this was just completely uh, contradictory to everything you knew about Steve Stevens. He is a he was a very unassuming person. If you if you had him in a room. He would be probably the last person you picked up. You would think that would resort to something like this. It, it, something had to push him over the edge, something or someone. And unfortunately, we may never know because the secret ended with him. Mm -hmm. And we, we just don't know. We can only speculate. And that's the sad part about it. We'll never get to know. But I do know this. This was totally what happened Sunday was totally out of character for the man I knew and that the person I interacted with on a regular basis. You, so you, I, I'm sorry. I'm just at a loss of words. I'm just at a loss of words. This is just. You, you live in Twinsburg, correct? No, I live in Euclid. I live right next door to where he lives. He, he lives in Euclid. Well, the, he, had a, he had an apartment in the building next to mine. Oh, at, the, at, so, at some time earlier. Yeah. Yeah. So how, I, I would see him all the time. How how long have you known him? I first met him when I moved to Cleveland in 2014. I've only been here a couple of years. I moved here from New York. What was it about him where, other than being a fraternity member, uh, that, that uh, 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 m m made you close to him, close enough to go out socially or, or to go fishing or, or whatever with him? I mean... We just had a, we had that interest, you know. I'm from the South originally, and he, um, he just loved to fish, and I said, me too. And then we just started talking from there. I mean, besides fraternity, you know, that was, uh, uh, both of us had a passion for going fishing. And since we both lived on the lake, it just, you know, it made sense. He was always looking, he said, I'm looking for somebody that can come fish with me. I said, man, I'd love to do that. And so that's how our conversation started at that point just for our love for fishing so that was what we that was the common ground that we had outside of the fraternity daryl um you talked about uh you just mentioned that you first got to know him in 2014. Um, yeah. of, of the things we know that weren't going well in his life there has been uh something he alluded to a relationship that didn't uh go the way he wanted it to with Joy Lane. And we also know mm -hmm. that he filed for bankruptcy during your time knowing him. That bankruptcy filing would have happened, I believe, 2015. Did he talk to mm -hmm. you about his uh, financial difficulties and how he was coping with it or the relationship difficulties? Never. I never heard any mention of anything like that. All of this stuff that you're mentioning with the uh, relationship problems, the financial difficulties, all of that has come to light since Sunday, as far as me knowing about it. Now, he may have spoken to someone else about it. I don't know, but it's never been a, a topic that we discussed. We always, our conversations, our interactions were always lighthearted. It was always about fishing or something silly. It was, you know, just us having a good time. It was never uh, anything where he was upset. I, that's why I, this is all a shock to me, because I've never seen him upset about anything. It's so and interesting. So, it's so interesting that 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 he was a fisherman, and, and so was Mr. Godwin, who was killed. Yeah, was a yeah. big time fisherman. His children talked about that. Uh, yeah. What what would you talk about as you as you did you fish off Lake Erie? Yes, right off the pier in uh, in Euclid, right off the pier. What would you talk about as as you threw a line into the water? I mean, like I said, we would just be talking, and I mean, it was nothing in depth. I mean, just life in general, you know, how I like Cleveland. He would tease me. He's like, why would you leave a beautiful place like down in Atlanta where I live and move here? And I explained to him I love the cold weather, and I just, you know, I love, I just love the people here. We would just be talking like that, and it never, and he would just laugh. He thought it was funny. He said, man, you got to be the craziest guy alive to want to leave beautiful weather and come freeze the death in the Cleveland. I said, believe it or not, I enjoy the winter more than I do the summer. Mm -hmm. And he would just look at me and say, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. And then we'd chat and laugh and talk. Yeah. And when we, neither one of us really ever, well, he was better at catching stuff than me. I, I don't have that much luck catching anything, but I go for the relaxation of it. 
we just, you we just showed a photograph of Steve Stevens uh, doing, uh, uh, the, I don't know what you call it, but I'm f familiar with the members of Omega Sci-Fi, that, that symbol that, that, that the members of Omega Sci-Fi, where your, your hands go up next to the side of you, sides of your head. Was he mm -hmm. steep? Was he really steeped and strong in the fraternity and, and what Omega Sci-Fi stood for? He loved the fraternity. He, he was a, he was a, that, that I can't say. He loved the fraternity just as much as I did. Did, did he ever talk about his job at, at, uh, at, uh, at, uh, uh, at Beachbrook? Did he ever talk about that? I mean, on, on his rant on, 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 the, uh, on Facebook, he talked about being under some pressure from uh, the, 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 what, what was required of him at his job and the things that he had to do and the things that he, the things that he saw. Did he ever talk about his job? Well, he just said his job, he had a heavy caseload, but he never said anything like negative where he was upset with anybody. It was just like, it's a very heavy caseload because, you know, the nature of work that he did, he was dealing with a lot of uh, trying cases, with, with, you know, dealing with the youth. But he never came, I never heard him mention any dissatisfaction with his supervisors or coworkers or anything like that. He never mentioned anything bad to me. Okay. Daryl.